In today's video, I'll show you how to change the oil and filter in a Jeep Commander. I won't be explaining anything about floor jacks and stands or how to lift the Jeep in this video, but if you want to know what tools and accessories you'll need to safely lift your Commander, I'll include links to those tutorials in the description. For my engine type, the owner's manual shows I'll need 6 quarts of 5W30 motor oil. Since my Jeep is currently sitting at 115,000 miles, I decided to use full synthetic high mileage oil along with a premium Bosch filter instead of the previous conventional. I'm also going to cut open the old filter in the next video so you can see what 5,000 miles on the road looks like. Because this process was recorded two weeks ago, I've worked in enough driving time since then that I'll be able to give you my honest feedback at the end of the video about the whole synthetic versus conventional debate, if you're on the fence about switching. After the Jeep has been raised and the oil pan is in place, you're ready to drain the oil from the vehicle. You'll need a half inch six point socket to remove the bolt. If your last oil change was done at the dealer or a shop, there will most likely be a torque on this bolt that will be too much for a socket wrench to handle at this angle. I definitely recommend using a breaker bar to initially loosen the bolt. While you're waiting for the reservoir to drain, you can go ahead and remove the oil filter. There are several tools available, but you'll need an oil filter C-cap wrench attached to a 10-inch 3-H drive extension if you want this done quick and easy. If you were to try to use the economy styled wrench, it's going to be one size too small for a commander. The original bolt and threads are still in like new condition and will be reused. After a few minutes, most of the oil will be drained and you can tighten the bolt by hand and then use your socket wrench to snug it down. If the bolt doesn't feel like it's going in easy, start over. You don't want to risk stripping the threads halfway through the job. You'll want to snug this down just beyond hand tight. Clean the area using a degreaser so you won't have any oil drips on your floor later. Next, you'll want to install the oil filter. But first, dip your finger into the new oil and coat the gasket. This will make the filter easier to remove next time and create a better seal. Don't worry about filling the filter with oil before installing because it's going to be nearly impossible to keep the fluid inside at that angle. Just like the bolt, the filter should screw on easily by hand and snug down using the tool. After removing the oil cap and positioning the funnel, we are ready to pour in all six quarts. If you're changing oil for another vehicle that doesn't require the full container, there is a window on the back with quart and liter markings so you'll know how much to pour. But in my case, I'll be using every drop. And for the most part, new motor oil will be clear in color. Unless you decide to go top of the line, then it'll be purple. After you've poured all the oil, make sure the cap is clean and fully seated. And let the Jeep run for about 5 minutes to let the oil circulate throughout the engine. While the car is running, if you were to have any leaks due to a loose bolt or filter, you would see it. After 5 minutes, turn off the engine and pull out the oil dipstick. The oil is above the safety mark, which is where it should be. Now wipe off the dipstick and check it again. Yep, that looks good to me. So we are done with the oil change and can now lower the vehicle and reset the Jeep's service indicator. Cycle through the menu options by pushing the step button until you see the service screen. Hold down on the reset button until the service indicator resets to 5,000 miles. As you can see, there is a night and day difference when comparing the old to new. You can recycle the oil by taking it to your local landfill and if that's not an option, Try contacting a local auto shop beforehand to make sure they can recycle it. And yes, you can pour all six quarts of the old into the five quart container without it overflowing. Use the degreaser and paper towels to remove as much oil as possible from the pan and funnel before running them underwater. 
So is synthetic oil worth the hype? Well, after driving around town for a couple of weeks, here is my impression. I have noticed an improved driving experience, not in mileage, but in the sense that the engine feels more responsive and smoother overall. But the biggest difference between synthetic and conventional that I've noticed is engine vibration. When the Jeep is idle, there's hardly any vibration. So if you're someone who likes to step out of the office and take lunch breaks in your car, I'd say that's where you'll notice the bulk of the change. I hope this video was helpful, especially for you Jeep owners, and if you'd like to watch more from this series, be sure to check the description for links to the tools, accessories, and other videos.